Hello, it's Jesse with ZBH Tech, and today I'm with you on kind of a follow-up video on the TP-Link router videos that I did based on their vulnerability um, and the exploits that have been taking place uh, with the botnets and using TP-Link devices. So in those videos, I mentioned that I'm going to be choosing a new router. Um, I'm going to be testing it and doing kind of a review. And this video is to let you know what I've chosen, what I'm going with, um, and what some of the functionality is. So let's get to it. All right, so let me just start off by saying that these are opinion, opinions are my own, and that this is video is not endorsed or sponsored. Uh, the equipment that I purchased, uh, I purchased with my own money on my own. So these are my own words, my own review. I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. So this is an unbiased, uh, honest opinion of what I think is gonna work best for me uh, and my network. And hopefully this information is useful to you. So if you find this useful, please like this video, uh, subscribe to my channel, it really does help me out. And also comment, let me know what you use, um, what some of the features are that help keep you safe with whatever product you use. And also, if you would like to see me give you more content based off of my new router, please let me know that as well. Be specific. Let me know which features because there's a lot of information here. I'm going to try to keep this video kind of short. I've reshot this video several times because it was too long. I was trying to cover too much material. So this video really is for me to just let you know what I've chosen and some of the general 30,000 foot uh, overview of what it is. So anyway, without further ado, what I have chosen for my network is the Firewalla. Firewalla, let's just so you can see that there. Purple uh, router. So what they have is they have five different routers. Uh, they start with the, um, they have an old one. I think it's red, but they don't really sell it anymore. Um, I actually used the original Firewall of Blue clear back in the day in like 2017. It's been a while. Uh, this company is uh, comes from like a, I think a Kickstart, uh, Kickstarter company. Uh, went out and got some funding. Um, had a new concept to help protect people at their home, you know, home networks. And they've blossomed from that. So what I have is the purple. There's the SE, the purple. The Firewalla, the Firewalla Gold, the SE, and the Gold Pro, I believe, are the models. So there's basically four models, or five if you want to count the Purple SE uh, or the Purple. So that's what I have chose. Um, and it's pretty easy to figure out which one you want, because it's really based off of throughput of what the Firewall can handle. So... The SE will handle, the purple SE will handle up to like 500 megabit internet connections. The purple itself will handle up to a gig. And when you jump up to the gold series, there's like three of those. They can handle uh, over a gig. They have like two and a half gig and they add some extra ethernet ports. The hardware is beefed up on those models um, and you get, you know, just faster throughput because of that. So I'll put a link to the website. They have like those firewalls right on the main page. And you can go through and kind of look at product comparison. It actually has a, a helpful walk you through um, how to pick the right one. All right, my other videos, I talk about three main categories or criteria that I had for picking my new firewall. So the first one was US-based or EU-based. This company, Firewallet, is based in San Jose, California. Um, they're not a really large company. They're a rather small company in comparison to some of the other key players, you know, in the consumer firewall market. So that kind of satisfies my first um, concern with like devices like TP-Link or D-Link or uh, some of these other products. Um, so they're based in San Jose. Number two was the support and the updates. And so I think one of my issues with some of these other, other companies is they have so many products across so many different verticals and so much to support that I think some of the less expensive or as they start to get older, some of the products fall off. They, they just don't get support. So I've had several of you reach out to me and say, hey, my, my router hasn't been updated in like two, three, and four years. And no firmware updates, nothing. So Firewalla has a pretty clear set end of life documentation on their site. 
and they basically tell you what they have supported, when it will fall off, what those dates are, right? And they continue to provide good support for their active products. They have a good support site, they have the ability to contact support, and uh, my experience with them has been very positive. They've been, they've got back to me quickly. They have really good documentation on their site, on uh, clear instructions on how to how to perform all the different functions of the router. They have a good uh, community site as well, forums, and there's some good Reddit pages as well that cover the firewall product, uh, firewalla products. Uh, so, and that was option. Or that was uh, criteria two. And the third one was monitoring and logging. And so I want to kind of just briefly go over that with you on kind of how their firewalls are marketed and executed. So privacy protection, cybersecurity, and parental control. Uh, all three of those are key to their product line. And most of their firewalls do have all of this functionality built into them. There's a little minutia there with the details of what the hardware can handle, and you can see that under their comparison, um, you know, within their site, they they show the features and functions that are available that may differ between each product. But as I go through their site and as I I'm checking out, um, you know, I've been using their products for quite a while, and I've had this purple in place for over a month now, uh, no problems. Um, very positive on the, the stability um, of the product. I have had yet had to do any re reboots related to the firewall. Um, I have had to do some reboots just because I've been ch making changes on my network, made some wireless changes, nothing to do with the firewall itself. So very solid. I believe it's running a version of Linux. Um, it does have the ability to run Docker. You can put a flash card in it and run some containers there. Uh, if you choose, but it's pretty much GUI driven. So there, you can get to the uh, CLI or the command line interface. There's a lot of information on how to do that. But for the most part, this product is geared and driven towards the home user. Even if you have basic network understanding, you should be fine, quite honestly. It's really point and click for most of the setup and the configuration. Um, so you know, it does let you do a lot of advanced type of networking and routing um, and configuration, but it also just lets you do very basic, simple things as well. So as I look through um, some of the functionality, um, what I want to do is I just kind of want to talk about some of the features. So it has a really a robust and heavy duty firewall intrusion prevention. It has the ability to run an ad blocker. Again, when I say ability, you just turn it on. Uh, it has the VPN server and VPN client, which is important. You can VPN into it, or you can use the firewall to connect to a third-party VPN provider. It has intrusion prevention, detection, DNS over HTTP. It does a vulnerability scan. It scans all the devices in your network. It will tell you which ports are open if there's a problem. Also checks for uh, default passwords on your devices, your network devices, to make sure you haven't left something with a default password in. It has bandwidth usage monitoring, which is great, especially if you have like a metered connection or you have a bandwidth cap. You can use, uh, you can turn this feature on, excuse me, and it will tell you how much bandwidth you've used. You can tell it uh, what day of the month it resets. It will auto reset. And then it shows you a historical breakdown of how much you've used each month you know, as you use it. So it has behavioral analytics. That is really key. So monitoring. If they call it flows, it's network information coming and going, um, and it shows you each device and what it's reaching out to on the internet, it gives you all the information of where it's reaching out to, the ports, the IP addresses, the amount of data it's transferring. So, and then it will alert you based um, off of what that looks like. Anything looks abnormal or excessive, um, and, and you can obviously mute those alerts if you don't want to see them in the future. My kids watch Netflix all the time and it started to alert me with that when I plugged it in I told it I don't want to know this anymore mute and it goes away right so it only show me what I need to see has safe search functionality geo IP uh, filtering so you can filter out certain countries if you don't want anything coming from those countries so visibility control 
and protect, right? So the ability to see what's going on in your network, the traffic that's coming and going, the availability to control that, and in return from doing that, you're gonna protect your network. So that's their three big functions of this device is to do that. So there's a whole lot of other services that are built into it. Um, let me quickly jump over and just give you a brief look at what my firewall -a screen looks like. I'll go over really quickly a couple of these things um, and then we'll wrap up the video. I want to keep it nice and simple. All right, so I'm back with um, the app. So this firewall, you mostly manage with the app that you put on your phone, but you do have the capability to run it on the web through a, the GUI on the web. So, but you can only do that on the inside of your network and you use your mobile device to actually authenticate that session into your browser. So let me go ahead and open up my firewall here. So here's the main app and I'm gonna just open this up. And right from the get go, we're gonna see our main page, which is gonna give us kind of a good snapshot of what's going on on our network. This network performance option is all green, that's good. If there's anything in the last uh, so many hours, I can't remember how long, this is uh, 24 hours, you would see red somewhere in this green scale here. And it runs a speed test every so often, every so many minutes, I believe you can set that in the settings and configure that. And it will show latency, packet loss, and speeds both up and down. And then below that, we can see our flows or network traffic. How many have come in in the last 24 hours and how many have been blocked? And some of those blocks will be the default firewall blockage. Others will be rules that you may have created for example, I have my access points. I do not allow them to talk out onto the internet. They're all blocked. So, except for a few sites, NTP and a few other sites. And so it's gonna, you know, it's gonna show me all those blocks that are happening. If I click into this, then it will begin to show me what has been blocked. Now this is gonna take just a couple of minutes to put together, right? There we go. And you see it, it's based by time. You can exclude things, you can uh, filter and just show certain um, services that have been blocked. But for example, let's just go ahead and there's uh, an IP here to Canada. I'm going to click on that. It shows me the interface IP address and it shows me the uh, destination or the, the source, I mean, sorry. And then the destination is here. What it came over and it shows me the port um and it shows me what happened what how it was blocked so why it was blocked and which uh, firewall rule was blocked so that's really nice um you can go through each of these and there's lots of them right so you could easily filter this down you can change your time frame um, and or you can go to a particular individual device and look at this same exact thing and not the whole network that list was like the entire network so uh, what you could do is just go under devices, click on a device, and see what's going on with that particular device over a period of time, right? So the next one down is just my live throughput. Here's my data usage. It says I have 27 days left until my data resets. I don't have a hard block but I or a metered connection, but I have it set with like two terabytes is what I picked, just so I could keep an eye on it so that if I have a high usage month, I might want to start looking at why. Make sure I don't have a compromised device of some sort, but I like to keep track of that. And then we have our device section with our rules. I have three alarms currently, and uh, which I haven't checked. And then down here at the bottom is all the services that I have enabled, and then the ones I don't have enabled. And so you can look through this list, and you can see that there's a lot of different options. Um, I don't have Adblock. Some of you may look at this and go, why aren't you using Adblock? I use a separate uh, service for Adblock, so I have it turned off. I also have the family option turned off because again, I use a separate service for that. But the device port, port scan, I do use, but I enable it and disable it as needed, right? So it will actually do a couple of different tests. It'll do an external vulnerability test to see if you have anything open, um, which obviously you would know because it would be on your router, your firewall but it also will do an internal test, which we kind of already talked about, but um, it will scan all the ports, tell you if you have default passwords, that kind of thing. 
So there we have kind of really quick, very high level. I went through things kind of quick. Um, did that on purpose just because there's so much that this firewall can do. The key here that I want everyone to understand is the information that this router firewall, sorry, will give you and allow you to act on, right? So information is key. Knowing what's going on on your network, um, being able to act on those and being alerted to when things are happening. So that to me is, is key to this whole thing in protecting yourself. Uh, this is a security thing, right? And privacy, because this has a lot of privacy controls in there as well um, with DNS, uh, the ability to have DNS over HTTPS, the ability to have the ad blocking, those are all really important things as well, which I use all of those. So hopefully this video has been helpful for you. Um, go ahead and give me a like and subscribe to my channel if this helped you. And again, let me know. Um, if this isn't something that you use, show, you know, tell me what you do. Tell me the steps that you take to secure your network. Uh, that is all great information for all of us to hear. Um, and also, if there's any questions you have about this content or this video, please let me know. If you'd like to see me expand or expound on any of these topics, uh, let me know that as well. And until next time, thank you so, so much for watching. Be safe and have a good one.